President Muhammad Buhari gives a hint that he might be going tough on his ministers. The cabinet has been on a retreat and will be reviewing the ministers' performances this morning. Nigeria's record-setting female basketball team, the Tigers, releases video accusing Sport Ministry and National Basketball Federation of Form. That video is coming up shortly. And the Kaduna State Governor, Nasser El Rufai, sacks Chief of Staff not long after he referred to Senusi Lamido as a former Emir. Any connection? We'll talk about it this morning. And of course, uh, glad to have you on The Breakfast this morning, Wednesday uh, morning, the 13th of uh, October, uh, 2021. Thanks for joining us, and we hope that we have a very interesting run on The Breakfast this morning. I am Osao Gye Ogbawa. And I am Messi Bopo. Good morning, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. We have a lot of uh, things to talk about this morning. We're going to start, as always, with our top trending stories, uh, where, of course, uh, we have a video clip to, first of all, share with you, and then we get right into that conversation. All right, just before that uh, comes up, let's, let's move to Kaduna State, where um, there is some controversy brewing. Apparently, um, you know, the chief of staff to the Kaduna State governor was sacked, but that's not unusual. The only challenge here is that it seems to have happened uh, not long after he referred to the, uh, well, to San Sanusi Lamido as a former Emir of Kano uh, while addressing, uh, you know, a, a delegation um, in public. And, and that's really where the challenge is. And of course, uh, uh, immediately after he left the podium, the uh, uh, Sanusi Lamido then stepped forward and said, well, since you referred to me as the MI or former MI of Kano, I'm going to refer to you as the former chief of staff. And you know why shortly, not long after that, the chief of staff to the uh, Kaduna state government was sacked. And that has, you know, created some controversy, um, of course, across uh, Nigeria. The same thing that I referred to yesterday when I um, made mention of uh, the Raymond Dokbesi, um, you know, pledging his support for Bolame Tinubu. Not long after that, the uh, court of uh, the Federal High Court then asked the EFCC to take him off their watch list. And yesterday I said it might just be a little bit of coincidence, but this one doesn't seem to be or to have a lot of coincidence. It seems to have been pre-planned or seems to have been, you know, the effect of seeming disrespect to the MI of Kano. I'm sure you must have seen that clip. Yes, I have actually seen the clip. And uh, for me, I just think that we're very big on, we're very big with, you know, titles in Nigeria. Uh, that's a very, very serious one. So for instance, you just have the fact that if your name is... Uh, Apparently, you've traveled to Jerusalem. Uh, you would probably have your name as Messi Jeppy at the end of the day. Yeah. But the truth is, over time, we've actually addressed several governors as former governor. You say former governor of Lagos State, former governor of Cross River State, former governor of River State. Yeah. So I'm asking if uh, you know we still refer, we still address these governors because if they come for a function or an event, you get to address them as former governors. Why is that not a big deal? So why is this really, really a big deal? Well, I, I, so, so well, I'm going to talk about it after the video, uh, please. We're going to share the clip with you, and then we'll talk a little bit more about it and some of the angles that Mercy just brought up um, after this. So, so quickly enjoy this. Royal Highness, the. Emir of Zizou and the former Emir of um, Kano. This and to be honest, when I looked through the plan and when I listened to the, I'll call him the former chief of staff, and you'll understand why later. Next time, you call me former Emir. <laughs> there, there, there is nothing like that. Well, you know, that's exactly how it played out. And, um, you know, of course, the uh, next news that broke was that the chief of staff had been sacked. Um, and so, you know, like one of the things that you mentioned, yes, you know, people, you know, who are no longer in certain positions, you know, of course, will be called former. Um, but, of course, Nigerians are very big on titles, very big on, you know, on respect. The same way sometimes we have guests um, via Zoom on the program. And if you don't address them as professor this or professor that, you know, he may... <laughs> <laughs> Because, he I mean, may not even answer your question, you know, because you, know, you because need to address him the properly. The truth is, let's be very realistic. I mean, these are titles. That's not how, um, this is not who you are. 
I mean, it, 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 it is. I mean, some people would say, well, I mean, this is who I am. I've worked hard to, to earn this title, and so I want to be addressed as this. The only challenge here is that um, Sanusi used to be the MI of Kano, and the only one, until sometime in 2020 when he fell out with the Kano state government. Um, you know, they accused him of disrespecting the government and disrespecting the Emirates, and, you know, there was also some little corruption charges here and there. And then uh, the Kano state governor, um, uh, Abdullahi Ganduji, then, you know, set up four new MIs of Kano. And so, you know, the, the idea was to whittle down his powers. You know, and this, I think, was in March 2020. The idea was to whittle down the powers of Sanusi um, and, of course, make him not the only MI of, of uh, Kano. Um, and so, so there, there has to be some clarity there, you know, if now that there are, you know, four or five of them, um, and not no, no one in you know one no one in particular is the MI of the whole of Kano. You know they're not have they're not MIs of certain regions in Kano State. If he still can be referred to the, as the MI of Kano, which I don't yeah, think. You know because yesterday I think that the internet has been buzzing with that particular one. That same uh, you know the argument that you're putting up for right now. You have a lot of Nigerians who think that um, really really should we even address him as the former MI because at some point it feels like it was really dethroned and all of that. That's uh, you know that's also another angle to the particular one. But I'm thinking, could it be that when he said, I was going to address you like the former um, chief of staff, could it be that that was a signal that was sent that led to his being dismissed? Yeah, I also saw some of those comments and people who said that it's possible that he also had heard of, you know, a possible cabinet reshuffle happening in Kaduna State pretty soon. And that's why he made that statement, knowing that, well, knowing beforehand that the chief of staff was going to be taken out, which is just conspiracy theories or people, you know, overthinking. Um, but an another question, you know, that I would want to ask is, you know, does he really have that much power in Kaduna State? Um, and what really has been the relationship with him and the governor of Kaduna State, Nasser El Rufai, uh, for him to be able to say, well, this person disrespected me and I would like him sacked? Um, do those things really happen? Nigeria is not the type of country where, you know, these things can happen and you can sue, you know, for, you know, being fired, you know, for you know, unlawful, unlawfully or something like that. Um, and so you have to, of course, you know, live with the, live with the you know, consequences, consequences of some of, the, of these actions. But what would, you know, Sanusi now, Lamido Sanusi, want to be referred to as? Would he still want to be referred to as the MI of Kano um, or the MI of a certain region or the former current, current former MI of Kano? I don't, it's a little <laughs> confusing. And this, this, I'm sure These are some of the things that were asked yesterday. You know, you what know. exactly would you like to be referred to as uh, uh, if you're no longer seen as the only MI of Kano? Maybe, just maybe, uh, there's an opportunity to speak with him and then we'll find out what he would like to be referred to as because it's quite confusing. I mean, I think that uh, if you ask me, if you have to discharge, if you have to let go, if you have to let go of someone, uh, fire them, they should be sacked based on the fact that they're not able to, you know, discharge their duties or probably the that some uh, form of not living up to expectation duty-wise and also um, let's just also talk about maybe rules and regulations of uh, you know the engagement of the entire service that which that should be the basis of you know sacking or letting go of someone yeah. i'm sure there's a rule i'm sure that there's a procedure in, in other, because in other right now it feels it feels very um Flimsy, it feels very... personal, you know, and, and th these are not the crimes. And, you know, I've, I've also gotten confirmation that they are both very, very good friends. I'm talking about the Cardinal State Governor now and uh, Sanusi. So, I don't, so, so you can, so, you can, so, you can so tell that I'm even being careful. I don't want to say former, <laughs> or I want to say, or I, don't, I also don't want to say MI of Kano. So I'm, I might as well just go ahead and call him, you know, one of the MIs of Kano. Um, not the only one, but one of the MIs in Kano. Um, and the Cardinal State Governor are really, really good friends. And, and so it, it's really the situation, the, you know, what Nigeria really is. If you have a relationship with somebody, you can really pull those type of favors every now and then if you feel disrespected. Same way people can be driving and, you know, police checkpoints stop them and they say, I'll call your boss, uh, you know, and you get themselves out of trouble. You For know, discharging your duties. Yeah, simple things like that, you know, and... Um, it is what it is, and that, that's really how Nigeria is. So I want to just hope, you know, the same way I was saying, you know, let's give a benefit of doubt that maybe yesterday's uh, situation with uh, Raymond Dokwesi and Tinubu, maybe it's the same thing here, that it doesn't necessarily um, mean that he, you know, called um, 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 El Rufai and, you know, called him that favor. Maybe, you know, El Rufai was always going to sack in the, you know, chief of staff in the first place. Well, even if that's happen. going to happen, I mean, we're just looking at the time again, you know, we're looking at the timing. Timing, You know, yes. timing is really, really, because for me, it feels like, that probably would have just been a signal. So I would definitely address you as a former. And shortly after that, you know, he, he lost his job. Fine. Anyway.
Um, we'll move away from Cardinal State now and then. Let's move into sports. And I'm sure Wally Scott will be excited to talk about some of these things later. The Tigress, who, of course, uh, just won um, the uh, um, African uh, Basketball, uh, Female Africa, African uh, Basketball Championship uh, for the third time. I believe they've won it 2017, 2019, and 2021, or 2020, 2021. Um, and have done Nigeria very, very proud. Uh, are complaining bitterly because of something that is very, very common with regards to Nigeria's athletes. When they perform exceptionally, they eventually do not get their wages or do not get their payments or not get what you know is accrued to them. And so we're going to let you watch this and hear what they had to say, and then, then we'll talk about it when we come back. Enjoy this. 2019 and 2021, which is historical, but still no invitation has been extended to the team to visit Asso Rock or a presidential handshake. Why? President of MBBF, Musa Kida, said that the Federation isn't owing any players, officials, or vendors. This is far from the truth. The last time we checked, our allowances, stipends, bonuses, training grants, and donations made by banks for players, officials, and volunteers still have not been paid. We are owed $73,118 from the NBBF, $24,000 from the Ministry for the Tokyo Grant, and $100,000 from donations from three banks in Nigeria. Oh, well, um, I saw that uh, yesterday and, you know, I actually did have a good laugh, um, mostly because um, it's, it's not, this is not new. Uh, I've, I've remember that we've spoken about you know something similar with regards to Super Eagles coach Gennard Raw being owned, owed about five months salary. Uh, we've heard of you know many many Nigerian coaches, Westerhoff and the, um, uh, the one who's late now. There's many of them who Nigeria's sports industry generally you know has has had its fair share of numerous times when players are owed allowances, bonuses, and some of all of that. I remember you know months ago I also was speaking here and I said that. You know, I feel like we also need to move away or develop our sports industry to a stage where um, the, the players are no longer dependent on government's financing. Um, well, government should finance, definitely, but the benefits of winning, you know, the, the, you know the, there should be some level of private sp sponsorship. There should be sporting brands. There should be beverage brands. There should be so all those brands who come together to support. And so whenever you win, you know, an athletics championship, basketball, football, shot puts, whatever, you know, it, it is, you're sure that you would either be signed by, you know, one agency or the other, or one, you know, sporting brand will sign you up. And you get millions of naira simply by doing that, instead of waiting for the Nigerian government all the time to pay. And that's what I said then. But, but the challenge, well, I'm just going to quickly say this. Okay. That from what they mentioned, they said they are owed seventy three thousand dollars by the NBBF, twenty four thousand dollars from a Tokyo grant that was given to them, and a hundred thousand dollars from um, uh, Nigerian banks that also donated to them. None of them have been paid to the um, to the uh, female basketball team, and that tells me that even when private bodies donate to these people, they still don't get it. Now, so, so let me start from, let's start from the beginning where you talked about the fact that, you know, it should not be left to government alone to actually fund, especially when you have, you know, um, this person's going out to represent the country, a different kind of sports and all of that. There should be some private support. Yeah. Let's also talk about reportage. Let's, com let's talk about patronage. Uh, if you look at the way we patronize, uh, you know, the other leagues, the other leagues that are not the Nigerian leagues or mm -hmm. other sports and all of that, you find that, that we don't have so much patronage. How many persons can I actually see? I know a lot of people have the JC, the Jesse, right, the Nigerian Jesse. But uh, if you want to compare that to the number of persons who own the foreign jerseys, I mean, or the different clubs, the Mayu, the, the Liverpool, the Arsenal, well, and what have you, you find that, that uh, it's not enough. I'm talking about how many persons are really patronizing the Nigerian, you know. But, um, but that's mostly, and you, you may want... So, so if, we, if we don't have at the individual level people patronizing, yeah. how do you then now say you want people to begin to finance, to support all of that sponsorship? But, but it might is, just be very is, difficult. So I think that, uh, you know, it's high time that we begin to... And that sounds good. Pretty much the same thing with telling Nigerians to buy local brands. You know, and stop buying foreign-made cars. Stop buying the Toyotas and the, and the Mercedes. You know, buy Innocent. You know, yeah, you know, it's pretty much the same thing. Support your, you know, your local teams. Go to the stadium, Teslim Balogun Stadium. Go to the stadium in Enugu State and watch Rangers and some of all of that, which I did a few times. But we can also argue and, you know, deny the fact that I don't think that they've also made it attractive enough for Nigerians to find that level of interest. Nobody wakes up in the morning and decides to 
you know, just go and support because of always the patriotic <laughs> thing to do. It has to be attractive to some level. Totally and that's what they've done outside Nigeria. Look at the South African League. Um, and you see the stadium is full every single time Orlando Pirates is playing because of how attractive they've been able to make their sports. They've invested heavily in their own sports and that's what makes it look that way. I know that ticket prices are, you know, pretty cheap here in Nigeria to go to watch a, a, a football game. It's maybe like 500 now, 300 now, I'm not sure. But it still hasn't made it attractive enough. And you cannot force patriotism. No, you true. Can't, you can't uh, flog a person and say, true. you must support your local team or your local basketball team. So, so I'm saying that we, we need to start from the basics. I mean, it starts from there. So if you see the level of patronage is very low in terms of less support, then how do we now progress from that point to having... Because you, you only get to support what you believe in. And if you don't believe in it, how then do you put your well, money in it? Well, so that, that's well, a very... Well, but it's okay to say, yes, let's begin to have, uh, you know, individuals. Let's begin to have organizations actually support, throwing the weight behind finances and all of that. That's a good one. But like you also mentioned, it's also important to make it attractive. Because if this, uh, it's not attractive enough, how then do you want to put out your money, all of that? Then I, also, I it's, quite un it's quite unfortunate if you ask me. It's really, really sad that you, you find out that those who lay the golden hand are not taken care of. And it doesn't really make sense. Yeah. And I, I said it earlier that, you know, it, it's, it's almost, you should expect these things if you're going to be performing any sport for Nigeria whatever the sport is, you know, and even that includes also the Paralympics. If you're going there, one of the things that you mentioned, if we play that whole clip, you will see that they called out Musa Kida, who's the head of the MBBF, multiple times and said that he basically doesn't show up for anything that they do. He, is, he only shows up when it's time to take pictures with them after they win. If they're going for training, they have having conferences, they're having anything useful, he doesn't show up. And that's what the, gir the girl said in the full length of that video. And um, he only shows up when it's time to take pictures with the president or when they win a trophy and then he comes to take pictures and carry the trophy with them and all some of all of that, which really, you know, is very, very indicting on him. Pretty much has been the same thing or was the same thing with Simon Dalong when he was sports minister back then. And so these are very stereotyped Nigerian problems, very, very, very typical Nigerian challenges in every single sector of the country. And the sports is not left out. The same failures that we've had in government at every level, education, healthcare, infrastructure, whatever you want to call, affects every single level, and that includes sports also. This one's even lucky that they're outside Nigeria. You can hear the accents. They're not even here in Nigeria. <laughs> Imagine they were in Ibadan or in, in Lagos. It would, it would, they wouldn't even have energy to make this video and uh, talk about some of all these things. And <laughs> but, so, but, but apart from the fact that, you know, uh, for me, I'm actually laughing. It. It's a very serious thing. Oh, I find it funny. I, I, I think that, uh, you know, it's high time that we step up the game because we can't continue like this. Because something will just definitely wake up and don't have, you know, persons representing us, you know, at any level in any sports entirely. Yeah. And that would really, really, really be bad that, for us. And, and uh, you know, and I hope... Okay, well, I don't, I don't want to, you know, speak negatively and say, I hope that everyone just realizes that you're, you, are, you shouldn't expect anything from, um, you know, the Nigerian side when you go to play for Nigeria. And that's why you see many, many of these athletes deciding to play for, uh, to run, to play sports for totally different countries. They'll go to Portugal, they'll go to England, they'll go to Australia. Any country whatsoever that would take up, uh, you know, them, they would move and, you know, leave the Nigerian um, sports industry simply because they've seen from time and time and time again that there's barely any support coming from the Nigerian side. And they matter the amount of money that is donated or is promised to them, they never get it. You know, maybe after years and years and years. Look at Choma Junwa. It was months ago that we started hearing that the current legal state governor gave her a house that was promised to her How many years more ago? than 10, 15 years ago when she won <laughs> the Olympic gold. And so it's pretty much the same thing that has happened over time till now, um, which is very, extremely shameful. Very shameful. Um, um, for everyone who has, of course, uh, any, any um, relationship with the Nigerian sporting industry. And I hope that's one of the things that we'll be talking about today because um, sometime later on the show, we'll be talking about Nigeria, um, the government and, of course, assessing the performances of its ministers. These are some of the things that should be asked. What exactly will the sports ministry be able to say that they have achieved since they've been there, you know, with all the numerous challenges that we've had um, in the last couple of years? I look forward to that conversation. It comes up uh, sometime just after 8 a.m. this morning, sometime around 8 a.m. this morning. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we are moving straight to Off the Press. We have a review of the stories making headlines across Nigeria this morning. And, uh, of course, our guests will be joining us. Good morning once again. <laughs> 